Welcome back to Visual Design for Multimedia. Today we are going to dive into Mozilla Hubs. And we're going to start, before we start building worlds and uh, getting into Spoke, the, the builder for um, the worlds in Mozilla Hubs, we're just going to talk about how to create custom avatars. As you can see right here, this is kind of like one of the built-in avatars. It looks like a panda bear. Uh, when you go to create a room, you can pretty much choose any avatar you want. So if I come in here and I say, okay, let's create a room and it's just gonna load the default room at first and then I can choose you know whatever room I want so I can say yeah let's join a room and I in here I can come in here and change my avatar right so there's all these like featured avatars that you can pick from these are just the ones that are built in blah 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 and you can customize these a little bit too and kind of reskin them but you know I can choose an avatar uh, and accept Actually, I want to go back and hit options. If I hit options, I can change my scene too. And there's all these built-in scenes. So I could choose like the, the peaceful mountain village. And I can even give it a different name if I wanted to. And I can share a link, blah, blah, blah. I believe if I just get the, yeah, I can apply that. I can join this room. And then there's my avatar again, I can change it. I can accept and I can enter. But you'll notice if I hit here, there's also this button here that says create avatar. And these are actually some of the avatars I've created. I created this little one called Spikey. I created uh, three different versions of this one character that I've been working on as a character animation project called Pudgy. And so I have the plain white version. I have a like a more advanced shiny version with multiple textures. And then I have this like solid wood one. And you can really think of these as like three different levels I'm about to show you. The white one, just getting the geometry in, is sort of a basic way to get your custom character in. The solid wood one, which is all one, is kind of an intermediate way. And a more advanced way is this shiny pudgy creature that actually follows the UV maps that I created in Maya. So this character was made in Maya. There's, Maya, unfortunately, does not export um, what's called a GLB format. So like if I hit create an avatar here, you'll notice that there's a little button here that says custom GLB with an upload. It's the worst user interface, but whatever. If I click on this, I can go look for a GLB on my computer. Um, I can also try to like, there's some things in here where you can use this online system called Quilt to sort of add some photo textures and things like that. And there's more custom resources found here as well. But ultimately, if you want to upload your own, it's a GLB. And Maya does not export a GLB natively, so you have to use another piece of software to either convert it to a GLB or add a texture and then export a GLB. If you happen to use Blender, Blender does have a GLB export directly. Unfortunately, Maya doesn't. GLBs are used a lot in VR worlds, some gaming applications, things like that, right? So I'm going to hit delete on that. Yes. And so anyway, I could choose any of these guys. And um, say I choose my shiny pudgy here. Let's grab that one. Give it a second here. The preview should pop up. I can call myself shiny pudgy. And accept. Enter the room. And an easy way to make sure your shader or make sure that your um, character that you've brought in looks correct is I can go ahead and hit the share button here. Oh, not share button, I'm sorry, place button. And I can add a camera. And you can see it's like taking a selfie of yourself. And so there I am. My character is actually in there. He's nice and shiny. He has his different textures. He's not like lit up super bright right now, but you can see he has blue hands and a blue face. I'm sure if like I was another character, I could come in and take a look at me and see all that detail that I brought in, right? So it really allows you to do fully custom stuff, which is cool. And I could take some pictures and I can walk around and I'm even scaled properly for the environment. So we're gonna kind of go over how do we do this? What's like a beginner way, which is just bringing in the geometry? What is a intermediate way, which would just add like one texture to the whole geometry? And then what's an advanced way, okay? All right, so I'm gonna exit. I'm gonna leave this world here and come back out again. And I am signed in. You'll see that there's like a sign up button, like if I signed out, and what it does is it actually just asks you for your email address, and it creates an account off your email address. Weirdly, they don't give you a password. Every time you wanna sign in, they send you a special link via that email address. You click on the link and it automatically logs you in. 
but it does save all the stuff you've created. It saves all your avatars. It saves all your worlds and spoke, all that stuff. But just so you know, it never gives you a password. It's one of the stranger systems where it is always you have to go to a link in your email. So put it on an email that's easy for you to uh, access um, on the machine that you're going to be using. I'm going to stay signed in right now. I don't want to have to go through that process. I just wanted you to know, like to create a custom avatar, you have to sign up to be able to use Spoke, which will be a future lesson on how to create these 3D worlds. You're going to have to have the account as well. So just use the same email address each time. All right, well, let's start off with the kind of beginner option for creating your custom avatar. So I'm in Maya. I have this character that I've created, right? His name's Pudgy. Uh, he's actually a fully rigged character, but I just copied him in here. Uh, one thing I like to do is just always make sure I delete all by type history on a character, just so I'm not bringing in any extra stuff with him. And to get things started, like I said, you can't export that GLB format that Mozilla Hubs wants, but you can go to File and Export Selection when he's selected, or just Export All if there's nothing else in the scene. And you can choose, a, two options will work. You can do OBJ or FBX. I tend to like FBX. There's a few more options in here that you can do. Unfortunately, none of them like take these textures directly out of Maya. Maya just does textures in its own way. I have not yet been able to find, maybe you guys will find out a way. If you do, please let me know. FBX does give you a lot of these options on geometry and exporting animations and um, cameras and lights and just a whole bunch of stuff in here. But as far as I can tell, that all gets stripped out um, before you bring it in to the other platform that's going to allow you to export a GLB. So anyway, I can choose an FBX for this beginner one, or I can choose uh, OBJ export. OBJ has a lot less um, lot less options here that you can do. It's just kind of like a def more default old school universal format. I'm going to use FBX, and I'm going to call this Pudgy New Test. Okay, And I'm just going to save it to my desktop for right now and export the selection. Okay, and if I go over here, I should have Pudgy New Test. Where are you? Oh, here he is, right here. Okay, so I've got an FBX file. Now, I have given you guys a link in today's lesson, in today's class 22. Uh, this is for the beginners. This is just this AnyCon, AnyConv.com FBX to GLB converter. It's the simplest thing in the world. All you do is open up this web page and you drag in your FBX file. So there he is right there. And I say what I want to convert it to. And I can just choose a GLB and I can hit the convert button. And it's converting it. And then I'm going to download it. And it's going to come down with kind of a weird name like the website URL. And I think that went to my downloads folder. Let me just double check. Yep, there it is. I had done an earlier one. So that's the one I had done earlier today. Oop, sorry, clicked off of that for a second. I had done an earlier one, and so here's the new test. I just wanted to make sure the dates were right on it. So if I, yep, 11, there we go. So I'm gonna get rid of the old one. And just like that, I have my file. And if I come back to my Mozilla Hub, create a room again. Give it a second here to load. I'm just going to pull that off of the Anycon. And I'll join, uh, I'll hit options again, change scene. This time I'll choose, um, let's get this wizard's library. And I'm going to go ahead and join the room. Actually, I'm sorry. I should have hit the button on the avatar first. I think it's 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 just automatically pulling in my old avatar, and I want to change my avatar. So let me do that again. Sometimes when you load more than once, it does that. There you go. I have to click on avatars. So when I'm on this one and I'm choosing my different scenes because I already had one. 
Oh, it didn't do it that time. Let me go back to scenes again. Come on, Wizards Library. It's taking it a second here. Hmm. Well, let's go to avatars anyway, because that's what we wanted. So if I choose this, I can go to custom GLB and then get that one right there and load them up. And then there he is. There's my avatar. I can even click him around. Now he doesn't have any of the textures. Like I said, that little quick conversion, the like basic way is just going to give you this white avatar to work with, right? There is this, like I said, I can say create a custom skin and quilt. And I feel like I can come in here and grab like an image somewhere. Um, I don't have an image easy to find right now, but I think I have this clock tower one. That might have been a little too high res for it. I tried to do this before with a quilt and it just did not seem to want to send it back. Maybe the image I had was too high res, I'm not sure. Yeah, this one hasn't worked for me too much, but let me see, like, go to a Google image real quick. And let's do, like, um, wood texture. Seamless. There we go. Grab that. No, actually, I don't want that. Let's grab... Save that. Okay, let's come back in here. There we go. Or the texture. I'm not up sure what's up with the quilt. Maybe quilt doesn't like it in Firefox. I'm not sure. But I could try dragging it. Let's see if I can make it work for you. See, it like works for a second and then it just disappears. I'm not sure why it does that. Maybe it, does, it can't figure out quite how to put that back into the Mozilla Hub. I can see it's trying to do something up there, but then I think it just kind of gives up. And then there is a link here as well, but this just takes you to the GitHub with a bunch of information on how to make custom avatars. And actually, I realized I skipped a step. So yeah, the quilt, I've ne never, been, never been able to make work. Maybe I'll make it work in a different browser. It might just be a browser issue. But one thing I should have brought up, and this was back um, when we were looking at some of the settings here. We're going to come back here in a minute. Um, but on this Mozilla Hub's kind of advanced avatar customization page, one key thing you have to do to your character before you export it as that FBX is make sure it's sized properly. They say it should be sized at around 1.7 meters in height. And the way I like, I think the easiest way to do it in Maya, because Maya doesn't have the best measurement tools in the world, is I just create a cube. And I come to my attributes editor, polycube. And um, before I do this, go to Windows, Settings, and Preferences, and click on Settings here. And just make sure your units, working units, are meters just so it matches up, because by default, um, Maya is centimeters, and you'd have to convert that to meters. Um, so I'm going to set it on meters. And then, I, like I said, I can come into here now, and I can just say, make this box 1.7 meters by 1.7 meters by 1.7 meters. And then I usually just turn on X-ray. And then as you can see, I sized my character to fit within that 1.7 by 1.7 by 1.7. It's a lot easier than trying to size your character because Maya just doesn't, once you have like a non-uniform structure, Maya seems to have a hard time <laughs> uh, telling you exactly how big it is. There are these um, measurement tools, like there's this measure tool here, distance tool where you can measure things out. Uh, like I could measure from tip to toe of my character, especially if I come to like front mode here you'll see that if I go to here and uh, create measure tool distance tool I can kind of go from the tip of the toe to the top of the head and you can see I'm at like 1.587 meters right now which is pretty good um, 
it's like a hair under the 1.75, but just make sure it's sized right because the first time uh, I created a custom avatar, I created it huge and it like took up the whole room. So just, I, I'm sorry I forgot to mention that. There's a whole section on it here. And like I said, I have this linked in today's lesson uh, in the module. But as you come down here, it talks about that sizing and how to use a regular GLB fire file, uh, et cetera. And then it goes through the whole upload process that I just showed you as well. So sorry to have to take a step back there for a second. So anyway, that's the basic way you would upload it and you get just the white character, right? Now, a more advanced way that we could do this um, is we could, I'm going to go ahead and hide this. We could still export our FBX, right? Um, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this GLB that I made with it. And uh, I'm going to actually delete some of these older older ones that I have as well. There we go. I don't need Maya anymore. And so there's this great software that comes with your Adobe Creative Suite called Adobe Dimension. You might not have downloaded it, but it's free to download. And so you could always come up here and look for Adobe Dimension and find it in your you know Adobe software platform. You could search for Dimension and it should come up somewhere. Maybe that wasn't the place to find it, but oh, under apps, there it is, Adobe Dimension, then you could download it. I pretty much have the whole suite. I just download for free, so I'm going to hide that. So I'm going to open up Adobe Dimension, and uh, I've actually already brought this character in, but if I want to, I could bring a different character in. So I'm just going to do start new. Don't save that. So here's the blank, Adobe Dimension is open, and I could go ahead and bring in my pudgy FBX. And now I can zoom in on them. I'm just using my scroller wheel. My middle mouse button clicks on them. You can see I can use these arrows to like bring him up and set him on the floor just so I can look at him. My right arrow clicks right to left. Actually looks like he got shrunk a little bit. He's more like about like that. I don't know. I might have done that by accident. Um, but this is like a really easy platform to kind of automatically um, just drop different textures on. It's so like I can make them red gelatin style. Um, what's cool is my character has the UV mapping that I had set up in Maya. So it actually does recognize the UV mapping. And so I could give my arms, um, or at least I gave it on the body there. Let's see if I can do that again. Huh, I wonder why, how I got that the first time. I must have clicked. Yeah, because each time I've done it before, I haven't been able to access those separate bits. But let's see if I can get like this leather one. There we go. I got the hands and the face. Let's see if I can get another one, a separate one on the arms. Cool. Okay. So I'm actually getting my different UV mapping zones. I never got that before inside of Adobe Dimensions, but that's cool. I did some custom UV mapping in Maya and it's actually reading it when I exported that FBX. And so let's see if I can get one more in the face here. Yay. Okay, cool. So I got all my different zones. Awesome. Okay, so that makes Adobe Dimensions even that much cooler. And Adobe Dimensions actually has all these textures from Substance Painter as well, which is the more advanced version I was going to show you, but it takes a little bit more setup. So there's all these cool guys down here that you can bring in as well. If you want to change anything, these actually have like some surface textures to them as well, which is pretty cool. He's pretty... Uh, Pretty, pretty bling bling there. Let's bring that out like that. That's actually a little bit better. I kind of like that little red texture to them. So you can bring it in here and then it's super easy from here. They even have some 3D models and stuff you can do in here as well if you wanted to like add them into your scene or modify them. It's not really a 3D modeling platform though. It really is just for adding different textures, maybe taking some pre-made stuff, moving it around. You can't really do a whole lot to it. Uh, and you can render out of here too if you want to. But I want to go to File, Export, and actually I need to select them first, and then go to File, Export, Selected Models. And from the format, I can choose a GLB. Uh, and then I can click on here and decide where I want to save it. So I'm going to call this Pudgy Newest Glam. Let's do that. He's very glamorous. All right. Save it to my desktop and export. Give it a second here. I 
think I put him. Oh, there he is. Cool. So here's my GLB, pudgy newest glam. And now I can come back to here and pick that one. Let's go grab Pudgy, newest glam, open them up. Let's see if it loads. Well, that's kind of weird. Oh, I just had to zoom out a little bit. Cool. He's there. Yay. There he is with all his cool textures, too. It looks like his face is coming in a little weird. Like, I swear I had a different, but it just might be the way. You know, it's just kind of a darker purpley. No, that's working fine. Awesome. And so I can give him a name up here. Glam Pudgy and save and give it a second. And the last section, the last option I'm going to show you is what you can actually do with a uh, substance painter because substance painter does add a lot more. You can really create some complex characters with substance painter, which is pretty awesome. But hold on one moment while we wait for this. Should load up. I think it's just taking it a minute. Let's see how big this file is. Yeah, 22.5 megs. Yeah. That's going to take a minute to upload, but it will get in there. That's maybe why it wasn't showing up right at first. There it goes. And yay, we now have a newest avatar. So I've got my solid wood, which I had done before inside of Adobe Dimension. Now I have my Glam Pudgy, and then I've got my shiny guy, and then the original white one. So I'm going to choose Glam Pudgy, and let's join this room. Let's skip. So I can look around a little bit. There we go. And if I want to make sure that he looks pretty good, I'm going to hit place and add a camera. Yeah. Actually, it looks like I grabbed the an old one. Let me go back out and choose him. Let's enter create room. Seems like I grabbed my old glossy one instead of the new one that I just made. But let's take a look. One more time. Options. Change scene. Let's do that. And change scene. Avatar, I want this guy. All right, let's try this again. Place. I think it's got me this time. Yeah, I'm kind of a dark character though. I don't think my those shaders that I chose are very bright or it might be partly this room. He's coming in all black. Because before, if I go back and change scene, Avatar, choose this guy. Yeah, there I am. It's kind of weird. He kind of like shows up in the picture a little bit. But if I zoom out, you can see there's my wooden version of my guy. And if I change scene here and go back to my avatars, here's the original shiny pudgy guy. So you can kind of play around with all these different look and feels. Let's use that. Yep, there he is. Cool. There you go, we swapped in. Not sure why I can see him in the scene. That's kind of like a weird little bug, but it's cool to see yourself and use that. There we go. And if I want to again, I can do one more, and I'll show you what it looks like with my guy that wasn't sized properly. Actually, he's not as bad as I thought. Oh no, see, he's gigantic in there. <laughs> he's like 10 times the size of everybody else. Um, so that's cool. I didn't realize I could do that like preview of what my avatar looks like in the scene, which is kind of fun. But you can see if I actually try to use him as my avatar right now, he's massive. Way too big for the scene. And that's because I didn't size him down to the like 1.7 before. All right, so I'm going to leave this room. All right, last version I'm going to show you, Adobe Substance Painter. And I do have a link here for you to be able to download. There's a free education version. It does not come, even though it's from Adobe, it doesn't come with your Creative Cloud license. So you have to go to this page, sign up for a free student or teacher version. I think it lasts for about a year and then you have to renew. So you can click on this and get a free license. But it's a really powerful platform 
uh, for advanced shaders, textures, all sorts of stuff that you can do with any file. So again, I can take my FBX that I exported out of Maya, and I'm going to go ahead and open Adobe Substance Painter. You can already start to see how advanced it is just from some of these little preview images that you get of the characters you can create. Now, if I want to bring in an FBX uh, after it loads up here, the first thing I have to do is I have to go to File and New. And then under File Setting here, I have to select my FBX. I have to select and go to my desktop. And I'm going to look for Pudgy New. Where is he? There he is. New FBX and Open. You can set resolution here. This will increase file size. I'd say stick around 1024. And I'm going to hit OK. And there he is. You do have to create UV maps beforehand in um, in Maya. And I honestly, if you're going to bring this Substance Painter, I wouldn't do too much of a fancy stuff. I would really just maybe do the automatic UV mapping. Um, but anyway, I can come in here. Because I did do custom UV mapping, it does show my custom zones. Like I had the hands and arms and a little face one. So that's kind of cool. So, you know, you can do a custom, but I've noticed it kind of stretches a lot of the shaders as well. So you just kind of make sure you really maybe scale them down a bit and get them to look the way you want. But you might have to go in there and really tweak your UV maps uh, and cut them a bit be better than I did on this one. Uh, inside of Maya. You might have to do a little bit of back and forth to get it to look the way you want. But I can drop in, like you can see my, that's weird, you know, the, the way it's stretching. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that because in Maya it actually looked pretty good. But, it, you know, it, it's having some issues with the way I did my UV mapping, so I'd have to go back and tweak it a bit. Um, but at least it's recognizing the zones. Ooh, I don't think I like that. Let's see a different one something kind of light. Inside of here though you have so many cool materials. There's smart materials and shaders and there's more you can go out there and download. There's a huge library of all of these different shader types and some have like built-in bump maps and displacement maps and can add a lot of surface detail to your models, right? Uh, I've downloaded tons of organic ones in the past and it's just pretty neat what all you can do with it. Uh, like if I drag leather on here it's going to do some different stuff and this is like bronze for the face. Um, I could do jade for the hands. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I think I'll stick with that, with the metallic, and just see how this looks. So say this is what I like. There's a lot more tools in here. Uh, once I'm working with my characters and stuff, um, aside from smart materials, I can add different layers over here on the right. I'll go into Substance Painter more in the future, but there's brushes. There's alpha channels. There's all these different things that you can add down here, different types of skins. It's amazing what all you can do in here. Um, but that being said, I'm going to say, okay, cool. I um, like what I've got here. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Export Textures. And in here is where I can choose where I want it to save. So make a folder, because it saves a lot of stuff. So Substance exports and I'm going to put this on my desktop and open that and then under here where it says output template come down and use the GITF PBR metal roughness template okay and go ahead and export and it's going to put a whole bunch of stuff in that folder and I can go ahead and close that now hide substance painter if I open this up you'll see there's a whole bunch of like, it's it's basically cut up all those textures and shaders into all their individual pieces. It gave you a GLB file and a file called a GLTF. We're not gonna end up using the GLTF, but the GLB will work. And so now if I come back to Mozilla Hubs and I say, create a room again. And I'm gonna hit the options here, change my room. Let's go with, uh, let's see another one, Spy Spiral Tower. Cool. I'm going to go back here to my avatars. I'm going to create a new one. Custom GLB. And I'm going to go to my Substance Painter folder that I just made. Or Substance Exports, I guess. Grab that GLB. Open it. And there he is. Very cool, right? So all those textures came through. My UV maps obviously need some work here, um, but I can zoom out and you can see he has all those different colors and textures. So, you know, 
similar to what Adobe Dimensions can do, but as you'll find out, Substance Painter is like 10 times the program of what Dimensions is. It just depends on how far you want to go and how much detail you want to add. So I'll call this guy like uh, Wood and Metal Pudgy. And I'll go ahead and save. And it's going to take that a second because I have a feeling this guy's kind of big as well. No, not as big. 4.3 megs. A little bit more um, light on the file size compared to that glam one that I made inside of Adobe Dimension. So I'm going to choose him and join the room. Enter the room. Cool. Let's try placing a camera. Oh, you know what? I st for some reason, it's still stuck with my old avatar. I don't know why. Sometimes once you're in here for a while, you have to kind of change things. So let me grab him again. There he is. So I want to use that avatar. Yeah, he looks great in here. Yay. I don't know why he shows up like that, but that's me in the background anyway. Cool. Cool. I guess it just kind of like places him in here for the minute. You can use that avatar when you do that. Oh, that's interesting. So I can just place him and then other people could use him too, maybe? I don't know. I'll have to learn more about that as we keep going. It's weird that his hand is kind of cut off. Maybe it's just having some issues redrawing it. But I am showing up in the camera scenes at least. And uh, yeah, there we go. We can start to see the wood side. I'm just like in the shadow of the light right now, I think. So. I will stop there. I'm going to leave the hub here. Hopefully this is helping you to understand how you'll navigate, choose different scenes, add that custom avatar, which is one of the first things that's due aside from your proposal. Uh, next lesson, we're going to start going into uh, spoke up here and we're going to start looking at how to design your own environment in Mozilla Hubs. All right, as always, thanks for tuning in and uh, let me know if you have any questions.